In this lesson, we are looking at using fractions and percentages as operators. Let's take a look at the first example. We want to find a half of 24. Now, the easiest way to do that question would be to spot that we want to divide 24 into two equal halves. So we want to do 24 divided by two. So a half of 24 is 24 divided by two, which is equal to 12. I want to have a look at this question again, however, in a way that fits in with the knowledge that you have from lesson N2B, where you were multiplying fractions. What we need to understand is that a half of 24 is the same as a half times 24 of means times in this context. And when you want to multiply a whole number by a fraction, you can do this process that we've got here. So in this case, I can do 24 divided by two. That's the same as finding a half of something. But you already know how to multiply fractions. You multiply the numerators together and you multiply the denominators. You might be looking at this and thinking, wait a minute, I'm not multiplying two fractions together. I'm multiplying a fraction by a whole number. But that doesn't matter because it's really easy to turn a whole number into a fraction. A half times 24 is the same as a half times 24 over 1. This is 24, a whole number, written as a fraction. And we can do this calculation either by cancelling in the first place or just by multiplying across to find that our numerator is 1 times 24, which is 24, and our denominator is 2 times 1, which is 2. And this gives us 24 over 2, or 24 divided by 2, which is 12. So all of these calculations give us the same value. And put most simply, it's 12. So the answer we're looking for is 12. Pause the video and have a go at the next three questions using both of these methods. Here's what you should get. Notice, either way, you end up doing the same calculation. 60 divided by 3 here, or 60 over 3, which means 60 divided by 3. Now, obviously, you don't need to do both methods. To answer any of these questions, it's good enough to do either the blue method or the red method. In example five, we've got to work out two thirds of 60. So all of a sudden, we're not dividing 60 into three equal parts anymore to find one third each. We actually want to find two thirds of 60. But that's fine. All we do in this case is first work out what one third is, and then double it. Just earlier on, we worked out what one third of 60 is by doing 60 divided by three. That gives us one third, and to find out what two thirds is, we now need to double this. So that gives us 60 divided by three to find the third, that's 20. We times it by two to get an answer of 40. That may well be your preferred way, even though there is an extra step now compared to the questions on the previous page. And that's because we have a numerator that isn't one. We're not simply finding one half or one third or one quarter. Let's just check that this fits in with our knowledge from lesson N2B on multiplying fractions. As we were doing on the previous page, we could also say that this is equal to two thirds times 60. Remember, of means times. So two thirds of 60 is two thirds times 60. And we can write 60 as a fraction. That's two thirds times 60 over one. And that would give us 
120 over 3. 120 divided by 3 would be 40. You could also have cancelled out before multiplying your fractions together. You could spot that 3 goes into 60 20 times, so we could cancel that down to 20. And 3 goes into 3 once, and then just multiplied these together. Your numerators would be 2 and 20, which multiply to make 40. And denominators are 1 and 1, which multiply to make 1. And 40 over 1 is just 40. Looking at number 6, we want to find 3 quarters of 44 grams. So the first step is to find out what 1 quarter is. To find out what 1 quarter is, we could do 44 divided by 4. Now we need to multiply by 3 to turn this, which was 1 quarter, into 3 quarters of 44 grams. 44 divided by 4 was 11. 11 times 3 makes 33. So this gives us an answer of 33 grams. This fits in with your knowledge of multiplying fractions because 3 quarters times 44 is the same as 3 quarters times 44 over 1. You can cancel here because 4 goes into the numerator and the denominator. 4 goes into 44 11 times. 4 goes into 4 once. And when you multiply these together, you will get 3 times 11, which is 33. And your denominator will be 1. So 33 over 1, which is 33. And our answer in this case is in grams. If you're not happy about cancelling, you don't have to. You could just have multiplied 3 by 44 and 4 by 1. You would have then got an equivalent fraction that you'd have to simplify down to get to 33 over 1, or just 33. Pause the video and have a go at question 7. And welcome back. Look at what we've done in all of the examples so far. We have divided by the denominator in the fraction. And then we have multiplied by the numerator of the fraction. In question 8, we have to find 5 quarters of 10. Now, don't be put off that this is an improper fraction, where we've got a bigger number on top. We're going to follow the same method as we've been doing here in blue. So that gives us 10 divided by the denominator, that's 4, and then we multiply by the numerator, that's 5. And you can see this matches what we've done before. Now, 10 divided by 4 is 2.5, or 2.5, and when we multiply that by 5, we get 12.5, or 12.5. So that's the answer. Let's just check that this fits in with our understanding. That's also the same as 5 quarters times 10, which is 5 quarters times 10 over 1. We can spot that 2 goes into the numerator and the denominator, so we can cancel as follows. And that gives us an answer of 25 over 2, which is an improper fraction, which we can't simplify anymore. But we could write that as a mixed number, which is 12 and a half. Now we want to find 24% of 60. In this lesson, we're going to do this by realising that 24% are 
means 24 hundredths or 24 over 100 as a fraction and of means times so we're going to multiply that by 60. Now we could treat this as 24 hundredths of 60 and then follow the method where we do 60 divided by 100 times by 24. Remember where you divide by the denominator and multiply by the numerator just like we color coded on the previous slide. But let's try multiplying the fractions together. 24 over 100 times 60, which is the same as 60 over 1. Now, you could multiply the numerators together and the denominators together, but 24 times 60 is going to give you quite a big answer that you might not want to try and do in your head. So we need to try and simplify if possible. I can see that 20 is going to go into my numerator when I multiply these together because 20 goes into 60 and 20 will also go into the denominator because 20 goes into 100. So I can cancel that down. We can divide that by 20 to get 3 and that by 20 to get 5 and now that's much more manageable to multiply together. 24 times 3 is 72 and 5 times 1 is just 5. So 24% of 60 is 72 over 5 or 72 fifths. And from lesson n to b you should be able to convert that into a mixed number if you're asked to. 72 fifths is going to be 14 and 2 fifths. While this is not the only non-calculator method you could use, to answer a question like this, it is just worth becoming really comfortable with the skill of multiplying fractions and being able to cancel like this because it will save you time when you do problems later on, particularly when you're dealing with algebraic fractions, for example. Pause the video and have a go at the rest of the questions before checking your answers. Here are the answers. So there we have it, a quick way of being able to find out a percentage of a quantity without using a calculator, even when our percentages are not necessarily easy ones to work with, such as 10% or 50% or 25%. It comes down to understanding how to multiply fractions and being able to cancel so that your working out becomes a lot easier to do.